श्री गौरंग नितनंद श्या दैत चंद्र गदाधार शिवा सदी गौर भक्त वृंदम जयो राधे जयो कृष्ण जयो वृंदवान श्री गोविंद गोपीनाथ मदन मोहन रीडिंग फ्रॉम चैप्टर ट्वेंटी एट ऑफ द जैव धर्मा द सब्जेक्ट मैटर हैज बिन रास एंड Specifically, this section is called the Stai Bhav. Stai Bhav means the permanent uh, relationship that each individual soul has with Krishna. Bhav is the mood, and Stai means the permanent mood, uh, in accordance with the particular uh, relationship that we have. Uh, this will be described here, so we'll we'll begin with the reading. Brajanath. uh is visiting uh Gopal Guru Goshami and he asks so Prabhu please tell us about the stai bhav the goshami says the stai bhav rules over all other bhavs like the king the rati for krishna which takes shelter ashraya in the heart of the devotee is called the stai bhav the ashray the shelter that mood which is found within the heart towards krishna and which remains permanently fixed is called the stai bhav that bhav makes all other bhavs dependent on itself and leads them to assist in some ras and cause some ras ras is the taste that comes from our relationship with krishna that's the taste but the mood the bhav is in accordance with our relationship just like in in braj there are those who have relationship with krishna as krishna's lovers there are those who have relationship with krishna as krishna's friends uh there are those who have a parental relationship with krishna these are the bhavs the mood and by expression of that love in their particular mood there's a particular taste or ras the stai bhav is the very form of taste but assumes the role of tasting who is doing the tasting it is he who carries the mood of love for krishna in a particular bhav i have understood that ras for the lord arises in the mental disposition of the atma within the pure sarup of the jiva I've understood that the ras that you have explained the very wealth of the pure jiva is experienced a little by the mercy of the hladini in the bound jiva. So he says I've come to understand he's talking to uh, Gopal Guru Goshami he says I've come to understand that ras manifests within the mind but it actually comes from the the pure sarup the pure uh nature or form of the lord of, of the jiva excuse me for the lord that each of us in other words it's not a mental concoction it may arise within the mind that we're feeling something for krishna and it may appear like it's a mental state but ultimately it is coming from the sarup the pure soul but this is also here then he goes on to say that pure jiva is experiencing this by the mercy of the hladini hladini means by the mercy of radharani she is the hladini shakti the pleasure giving potency she has the full power hladini shakti means she has the full power to give krishna pleasure so those who can give krishna pleasure uh gain that power through radharani otherwise there's no other way radha is the source of that pleasure for krishna she alone but she extends herself through her various expansions and rays and so forth to express that love so in one sense it's radharani who is always giving that love even through the individual jiva uh who carries the mood of devotion which has been imbued upon us by the Pladini Shakti by Radharani independently we have no power to do that uh so that that uh very source 
of pleasure to Krishna shares that pleasure potency with all of us and awakens that within us, like the uh, match that lights the candle. She awakens that within us. Now, he says, I want to know more about the different types of rati. Seeing Rajanath's understanding of Tatwa, Guru Goswami was in great bliss. Tears was flowing from his eyes, and he embraced Rajanath. He said, oh, how I've become so fortunate to obtain a disciple like you. Oh, now please listen what I have to say. The primary ratis can be divided into five. Shuddha, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya. Just as the sun reflects in a crystal and other objects appear differently, Rati is seen to be different in the different receptacles of the Stai Bhav. In other words, just like the example is often given, if you have various pots of water, sun is shining above. If you see, you see the reflection of the sun in each of the pots. So, we are all individual souls. That is the first and foremost understanding in Vaishnava Dharma. That I am not God. I am part and parcel of God. But my nature is that of service to the Lord. Service means love, ultimately. Uh, service is how we express love. The gopis express their love in a particular way. Coward boys express their love in a particular way. The parents uh, and those of parental uh, disposition uh, express their love towards Krishna in a particular way. So, uh, this is ultimately all coming down from that one source. And we can say here, it is the Shakti, the Hladini Shakti, that shines within us. Uh, that uh, Shakti of Srimati Radharani, we call it Bhakti Shakti or Ladini Shakti, whatever you want to call it, Lila Shakti, we want to call it, different names. But it is that which comes from Radharani because she holds the power of devotion. Krishna and Radha. Krishna is the enjoyer. Radha is the giver of pleasure to Krishna. The primary rati is called Swacharati because it has the quality of a crystal from associating with many types of devotees and from performing various sadhanas approved by them. Like a crystal, it shines the light. Otherwise, the crystal is dull. It needs the light to shine on it. And it uh, reflects that light in various ways. So we can say the jiva is like that crystal, but the light of Radharani is that which shines upon us and manifests the colors within our heart or the types of love. So here it is expressed that uh, by associating with many devotees and performing the various sadhanas, gradually we find ourselves gravitating to a particular mood. Persons with this swacharati sometimes praise Krishna as the master, according to their mood. Krishna is the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. But sometimes they joke with him as a friend. When that relationship becomes more intimate, they can be friendly with Krishna, if that's their bhav, their stai bhav. Sometimes they protect him as their son. That is like the uh, parental affection. Sometimes they attain joy in seeing him as their lover. That depends on the bhav within our heart and which is reflected upon us by the mercy of Srimati Radharani. And then there are those who think of him as that Paramatma, that Supreme Person. A person with Shantirati has Sam. 
their goal in meditation is to uh, realize that Paramatma, that Shantar. They see non-differentiation of the knower and the object within the mind. Shama, Rati. That is uh, that state of divine union through peace. Uh, Shantaras. So Brajana says, Previously I thought that Shudarati did not exist in the people of Braj. But I've come to see that Shantarati is also existing to some degree in Braj. And material Alankara Rati with the qualities of Shanta does not exist. It is seen to exist in Rati for the Parabrahman. The point being made is, you can find all of these rasas in Vrindavan. For instance, we may say a flower, a, a, a flowering tree within the Dham, it bursts into bloom out of love for Krishna. We may in one sense think it is Shant, it's just standing there, standing there. But Krishna walks by and it blooms a flower with the most remarkable fragrance, and like that. Or the river may run backwards, although it's, uh, or the stones may melt, all these descriptions are there. But uh, in one sense, they may appear to be inanimate or simply absorbed in the, in the, we'll say the ever-present love of the Dhamma and, and Krishna. They exist in there. But sometimes they may express that love when the uh, time is right. So we can say that some type of Shantaras exists there and may manifest in service in the sense of offering that flower to Krishna like that. So please explain the qualities of Dasarat. Now understanding what is Shantaras, let's understand what is Dasya. Goswami says, there is always the feeling that Krishna is the master and I am the servant. From this type of intelligence, Rati endowed with adoration arises. This is called Dasya Rati. Those who are attached to this Rati have affection for no other object. Their natural inclination is to serve Krishna in so many ways. Uh, there are so many ways that one can serve Krishna, uh, but this is in a form, more formal uh, regard. Dasaras. Uh, then we move into a more uh, uh, intimate way through Sakurati. What are the qualities of Sakurati? Those who have firm faith in Krishna think of him as an equal. Sakya means like a friend. In, in Dasyarati, one maintains the formality that you are my master and I serve you. There may be attendants in the household of Krishna who serve Krishna with the formality that he is the master of the household. After all, Nanda Maharaj, the Shodamai, they, they are the king and queen of Braj, we can say. They have servants, household servants. So Krishna has servants also that uh, will attend to him, seeing to his bath and all, so many things. Of course, everyone else wants to rush in. The coward boys, the, even the coward girls, like to rush in and take take control of. We'll we'll see to Krishna's bath, or we'll see to Krishna's meal. Like that. <laughs> they come forward like this. But there are those who are technically the servants of the household. But here we come to uh, the quality of uh, Sakya, where there, in Sakya Rati there's joking and laughing. The servant will never laugh. Uh, he's servant. Uh, he will not make a joke with Krishna. But uh, the coward boys, they're free to make jokes with Krishna. In fact, Krishna enjoys their jokes and jokes back with them. What is the qualities of Vatsalya Rati? Goswami says, Krishna's elders have this Rati. 
parental affection. This is called Vatsalya Rati. In this Rati, there is a caring for Krishna, doing auspicious actions for him, giving blessings to Krishna even, protecting him, doing various rituals uh, just to protect Krishna. If uh, Krishna has dealt with a demon, they may all gather and, and do some purific, uh, purificatory rites, ward off any evil spirits and so forth. They're wanting to protect Krishna. That's their mood, to protect Krishna. And so they, they perform auspicious actions, blessing him, but they show affection also by kissing and touching him, smelling his head, so many different things affections comes in that parental mood. Brajana says, oh, please describe, now what are the qualities of Madhurya Rati? Goswami says, that Rati uh, found in the doe-eyed women of Braj. It is the root cause of eight different types of enjoyment between the women and Krishna. It is called Madhurya Madhurya means sweet. It is the sweetest of all relationships. Uh, in this rati, there are sidelong glances uh, to each other. So the gopis attracted to Krishna, glance at him. Krishna sees them glancing. He glances back. And within both of them, there's a stimuli of, of awakening love by seeing that glancing going back type of Transcendental flirtation, moving of the eyebrows, affectionate words, slight smiles. The ratis from Shant to Madhura progress, progressively become joyful with special taste and are present in the devotees of different types. So I have now briefly described these five primary ratis. Rajanath then asks, what is the real meaning of bhav in spiritual ras? Goswami said, that bhav, which appears in that wise person who has dedicated his intelligence to the Lord, experiences in the heart through deep impressions of previous bhakti, is called bhav in, in, the, scriptures upon, in the scriptures that describe ras. In other words, awaken within that soul who has uh, dedicated himself to the service of the Lord and has ex executed that service. Uh, there are deep impressions of previous bhakti which may also be carried over from previous lifetimes. And this awakens, all of this awakens within the devotee's heart. And that uh, special bhav or mood for Krishna begins to awaken or bloom within the heart also. All bhavs exist in relationship to the Lord. In one sense, they are all inconceivable. Bringing the inconceivable bhav to the heart, examining it with one's fixed intelligence and understanding one's stai bhav among the inconceivable bhavs accepting that stai bhav as relishable while accepting the other bhavs as ingredients. Here you will manifest the symptoms of nitya siddha, uh, akhanda ras, uninterrupted ras. It will awaken within you that it is always there, uninterrupted. Gradually, gradually, like this. Brajana says, Prabhu, what are the deep impressions of bhakti related to this topic? Goswami says, overcome with material objects, wandering in the wheel of karma for many births, conscious in composed of ancient consciousness, composed of ancient and recent life impressions. In other words, the jiva travels from lifetime to lifetime, carrying uh, various types of impressions. Some we've gathered this life, some are carried from other lives. Why we take a particular birth in this world, 
who are our parents within this world, the experiences we go through within this world, uh, is all based upon what we've done previously and is carrying us to the place where we are right now. The consciousness at this point is a distortion of the function of pure consciousness that is found within the pure Atma. But the impressions created by actions of worship in association with devotees and by the strength of that Sukriti, Sukriti gained removes all the distorted impressions and manifests real impressions within the heart. This is the gradual uh, purification of the heart. Cheto Dharpana Marjanam. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu expresses this in his first prayer of the Shashastakam. The cleansing of the heart through the process of bhakti, removing all past impressions that bind us to this world, freeing us. That's, that's why the devotee in many cases, a considered liberated person because he's actually free from all binding uh, impressions from the past and lives in the reality of his relationship with Krishna. When these impressions become deep, they manifest the inconceivable tattva within the heart. And that is the meaning of deep impression. By the strength of Sukriti, with the removal of distorted impressions, the manifestation of real or true impressions of our relationship with Krishna manifest, and as they become deeper, that uh, uh, awakening of pure love manifest. Brajana says, I, I want to know who is qualified for this, this Rasa Tatra. And Goswami says, the person who has been able to bring the inconceivable bhav into his heart by deep impressions as described is qualified for rasa tatra. Others are not qualified. In other words, we have to begin our devotional practice through regulation and make it strong that this is what we do. I am a devotee, first the conviction. I am a devotee of Krishna. And to uh, uh, awaken that permanent consciousness of the reality of I being this devotee of Krishna, I must express my love towards Krishna by following the instructions of my Gurudev. I must chant mantras, I must read the books and so forth, uh, do my daily duties in relationship to Krishna. Becoming steady, then gradually, gradually, gradually awakening the deepest impressions from within, all of this comes to the surface. This is by the mercy of Guru and Krishna. So when one finds that awakened consciousness in there, he will ultimately experience Ras. Vijay Kumar said, O Prabhu, I have spent my life studying the Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is the scripture describing Ras. Is it an, is it an, an offense to recite the Bhagavatam to ordinary people to earn a living? Vijay Kumar is asking this for a particular reason. He's a studier of the Bhagavatam, but he's also a professional Bhagavat reciter. There are those... <coughs> It's like professional kirtanias. <laughs> you can hire people to come and do kirtan, and you pay them. You can hire someone to come and, and read Bhagavatam. They're kind of like the priestly class, we call it. Uh, they, they're hired to bring about an auspicious uh, thing uh, within one's own household, within one's home, and so forth. One wants to... Uh, create an auspicious environment. So you may hire some kirtanias. You might hire someone to do, just like any professional priest, they're hired to do the jagnas, they're hired to do the kirtan. 
but there's also professional Bhagavatam readers. In India, that's an occupation. I mean, it's, it is done by the Brahmin class and like that. But understanding that the Bhagavatam ultimately is the revealer of the highest ras, Vijay Kumar is asking, well, I'm rethinking all of this. Uh, is it all right then to dis to read this to ordinary people who have no real understanding? Goswami says, the Bhagavatam is actually the crest jewel of all scriptures. It is the very fruit of all scriptures. <coughs> One should follow what is stated in the first canto, third verse. There it is stated, Mohur Aho Rasikaha Bhuvi Bhavuka. Except for the Rasika or the Bhavuka, no one is qualified to drink the rasa of the Bhagavatam. That is, one who is actually, the Bhagavatam is meant to be heard by qualified hearers. <coughs> so give up this profession. Immediately, he says. He orders him now, actually. He says, you should give up this. This is not uh, just for creating, uh, in this mundane sense, some some uh, pious environment. You know, people do things religiously for piety. But Krishna consciousness is not, main, uh, is not done for piety. It is done to awaken actual love for Krishna. That is the highest ras. So the Bhagavatam actually, when it heard properly, is meant to awaken our natural love for Krishna. It is not meant for just some social, uh, uh, like at a marriage ceremony or something like this, or, or, or to rid uh, uh, some negative energy out or because... Uh, uh, of, of certain circumstances we want to uh, have Bhagavat reading or, or Kirtaniyas come to our home. No. Invite true devotees to chant the name. Invite a pure Bhagavad Vaishnava to recite the Bhagavat. The Bhagavad Vaishnava is non different than the book Bhagavat. That is stated in the Bhagavatam too. Uh, so, if you want to have Bhagavat reading, uh, invite a true Bhagavat Vaishnava and hear the Bhagavad from him with the mentality that I want to uh, invoke my natural love for Krishna. That's why we should be hearing the Bhagavatam. That's why we should be chanting. So he says, immediately give up this profession. If you are thirsty for Ras, give up this profession. Do not make offense to Ras. As Raso Vaisaha, Ras is Krishna himself. This Shastric statement is, Ras is Krishna. That taste that one actually experiences is non-different than Krishna. So if you want to taste Ras, don't do anything which is opposed to Ras. And, and reading the Bhagavatam or reciting the Bhagavatam to unqualified persons will not awaken Ras, either in you or in any other person listening to the Ras, to the Bhagavatam. There are many professions mentioned in the scriptures for supporting the body. Use those, but do not earn money by reciting Bhagavatam. Do not earn money by reciting the Bhagavatam to ordinary people. You can find some other source of income, but not, not reciting the Bhagavatam to make a living. If one finds hearers who are rasikas, you can have them here, Bhagavatam, in bliss without accepting a fee. Don't charge anything. Go there to share the Bhagavatam with them and and uh, both parties, the, the speaker and the hearer, will become uplifted by that. Vijay Kumar said, Oh Prabhu, today you have saved me from a great offense. I have been doing this, but immediately I, I will stop what shall I do about my previous offense? Krishna says, no, that offense will not remain. Don't worry what you've done in the past now. Proceed forward. That's what we have to do. We have to proceed forward. 
So that offense will not remain. You have surrendered to Ras. In other words, Krishna. Ras is Krishna. You have surrendered to Ras with a sincere heart. Ras will forgive you. Nice statement. Uh, taking Ras in a very personal way, Ras will forgive you. Surrender to Ras and Ras will forgive you. Give up any idea of sharing this with mundane people and surrender to Ras, surrender to Krishna, surrender to your relationship with Krishna. Ras will forgive you. Krishna will forgive you. Don't worry about your past. Move forward. Do not think about this any longer. Chalo is gone. Goodbye. Is gone. Now we move forward. We don't have to hold on to things of the past. We got to move forward. Vijay Kumar said, Prabhu, I will nourish my body by some other occupation, even if it is very low <laughs> occupation. For me, I will not glorify Ras to unqualified people, and I will not take money from them for doing such glorification. That is in the past. Goodbye. Now we will move forward and follow your instructions. Goswami said, You are fortunate. Krishna has made you his own. In other words, Krishna has embraced you. That statement, Krishna has made you made you his own, means that Krishna has brought you into his embrace. Otherwise, how could you find such firmness in bhakti? If you are firm in bhakti, then you know you're in the embrace of Krishna. You are a resident of Navadvip also, and therefore Granga has given you all shakti. So at this point, the chapter comes to an end, that by the mercy Krishna, by the mercy of Goranga, you have come to this point. You can leave the past behind and move forward. And so, um, Goswami says, you can return to me again uh, in the next evening and we will discuss some more. Jai Gaur Pemanandi Haribo Jai Shri Shri Radhe Shanam.